only he who does this is safe. The very blessing that comes in that thing is all the reward that any person needs for putting himself just now before the judgment seat. And standing there, what has he to fear? <coughs> Nothing. And when all fear is cast out, what is it that it does? Perfect love. What does the Bible say? How God's people will be known? By what? Love. By their love for one another. What is that? Isn't that perfect love? Right? When did, when did Job get restored after all that happened to him? You remember, God gave the devil a, a very long leash. And he says, okay, you take my boy and you, you go ahead and do whatever, but you can't kill him. What happened to Job? How instantly, how fast did things turn for him? Did it not happen? Children dead. Everything gone. I mean, boom, just as fast as one man could come and tell him everything was gone, the other man was right behind him. The moment the words were done, your kids are destroyed. You did everything. How fast do you think the devil's going to work when God allows that? How fast? You think it's going to happen like it did to Job? God is looking for a people like Job. Alright? This is what we have to have to finish this work. A people that are standing there in the judgment as Job was. We're not talking about a perfect people. Absolute perfection. We're talking about a people that are perfectly relying upon God. And He is going to do the work. Amen. He's promised us that He'll do the work. He's longing to do the work. Let us turn to John, my favorite gospel, John chapter 3. And we'll begin in verse 27. All there? Amen. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Amen. Ye yourself bear my witness that I said, I am not the Christ. This is John the Baptist speaking. But that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoice greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, this my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. Do you hear John the Baptist? Do you hear his heart? Do you hear who he is? What message did he have? Did he not have this message to prepare the way of the Lord? What message are we supposed to have today? The same message, preparing the way for the Lord to come back. We have to have this same attitude. We have to have this same message. We should spend time here studying this stuff and wondering, you know, what God has for us. Because he's got great things for us. But he can't give them to us if we're not listening. Let me continue in verse 31. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speak of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth. And no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal. Did you hear that? Set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. Have we anything to fear? Anything at all? He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Do you believe that? That's what it says. And he hath believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. You know, we have so many wrong things in this world. We, we have something called relativism. Have you heard of relativism? you heard of Marxism? There, there's, a, there's an example of relativism, right? Relativism, there's no wrong. 
There's no wrong. One's theory becomes the thesis. You know, this is the devil's work. One theory becomes the thesis. Another has an antithesis. Right? Out of this comes a discussion, right? Which is uh, called the dialectic, which brings us to the synthesis. You, you, you follow me? This is the devil's deal. He plays both sides of the game. He, he, has, he has the problem and the supposed solution, right? And they come together in this great supposed compromise, and, and you have what the devil wanted all to begin with. And everybody's duped. This is the only truth, brothers and sisters. Yes. This is the word of God. You know, God has given us this amazing senses that we have. And this is a beautiful program. The world's got it figured out because they got the idiot box in everybody's, in everybody's house, right? And, and you can feed yourself upon that thing and have your mind bent and warped or whatever. Or you can feed yourself upon the Word of God and be changed. It's that simple, really. What you see, what you hear, I've seen things I can't unsee. I wish I'd never seen them. You know, I wish I'd never seen them. You can't unsee stuff. And the devil has a way of bringing that stuff to you. But, but God has a program here. And it, and it works the same way. But we've got to feed upon it. We've got to look at it. We've got to listen to it. We've got to want to eat it. Do you hear me, brothers and sisters? I want to read you something from a uh, great controversy. It's very small. When the leading churches of the United States, uniting upon such points of doctrine as are held by them in common, you see, this is the whole deal. We're supposed to just, everybody get along with what we agree upon, you know? And let's just have this faceless God that we can all call God and, and everybody gets to the same place, right? Isn't that what they say? Okay. Uniting upon such points of doctrine as are held by them in common shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and to sustain their institutions. Does God need man's law to sustain his institutions? If we've defiled ourselves to that point, brothers and sisters, you're in the wrong place. You need to put it in R for race and back up. Then Protestant America will have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy and the infliction of civil penalties on dissenters will inevitably result. In layman terms, history will be repeated. Right? Yes. And, you know, one thing we should know about history is we don't learn much from history because we continue to continue to repeat it. And yes, that was redundant for a purpose. <laughs> Let us turn to Luke. Luke 23. And verse 12. Let me know when you get there. Luke 23 and verse 12, and it says, And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were enemies, they were at enmity between themselves. So what happened? What brought these two together? Common enemy. Huh. huh. Commonality, huh? Common enemy. Yeah, right. I'm just playing with it. Absolutely. So we get the point, right? All right, they, they have these, people love diamonds, right? In this world, they, they like diamonds. Diamonds, real diamonds, take a long time to procure, right? You have, you have to have coal that's pressed and pressed very hard for a long, long time before you get a diamond. Then it needs to be cut. And it has different colors and inclusions and whatnot. And have you heard?
heard of the synthetic diamonds that they grow today? Yeah, well, the chemicals in a lab, you know, they just, boom, they have perfect diamonds. With no occlusions, with whatever color they want, they can design it. Synthetic diamonds. What do you think the synthetic diamonds going to eventually do to the real diamonds? I mean, they're more brilliant. They're more beautiful. They're going to be, they'll put the others out, right? What do you think about that? <laughs> Let's turn to Revelation. I'm not going to go there. Revelation 7. This is the ceiling of the 144,000, right? I'm just going to read four verses here, one to four. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels and to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, what? Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have, what? Sealed, Sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. What do you think about this sealing message that we have? Are you coming full circle into it? Do you want to be where Jesus is, or does it terrify you? Turn your Bibles to Revelation 14. Revelation 14, and begin in verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Sinai, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their forehead. <coughs> and I heard a loud, and I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. I love that verse. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 140 and 4,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were what? Not defiled with women. For they are virgins. They are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men and being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no God, for they are without fault before the throne of God. You know, when I read this, I think of the ten virgins. Right? You remember the story of the ten virgins? It says that they all went to meet the bridegroom. Right? They were all believers. They all loved the Lord. Right? They all had lamps. They all had lamps, and their lamps were burning with oil, right? It even says that all ten of them, the foolish and the wise, all slept, right? They slumbered. Are we asleep today, maybe, brothers and sisters? But it says that the five wise carried oil in their vessels. I like to believe that that was an earthen vessel. That they had the oil, which represents the Holy Spirit, in them. Okay? When the Lord came, Five went in and five didn't. Correct? These brothers and sisters, ten virgins, were all church-going people. Okay? They were all believers. But five went in and five didn't. And, and why do you believe that is so? Because they 
they half wanted a religion. They half wanted their Bible. They half wanted Jesus. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the only thing you can reckon. I mean, if you got something else, give it to me. Because I'd love to hear it. Brothers and sisters, when he comes, you do not want to be found outside. Because in the story of the five, the, the five foolish virgins, was them knocking on the door. Right? Isn't that the role reversed? Them knocking on the door. And what did Jesus say to them? Depart from me. Brothers and sisters, if it doesn't cost you much, it isn't worth much. Let us remember that as we go forward. If it doesn't cost you much, it isn't worth much. But the whole deal here is Jesus has sealed you. He wants, to, he wants you. He's redeemed you. He has declared you righteous. Will you not believe it? Will you not walk in faith with Him? Let us, let us not fear the judgment. Let us walk towards it. Let us lay these things down that need to be let go of in our lives. Listen, time is running out. When, when this thing is all said and done and wrapped up, yeah, we're going to see things a whole bunch different. But you remember, there was a group that sang this song, this Moses song, and nobody else could sing it. Why? Because they didn't have the experience. They didn't go through it. Listen, it's going to get dark. It's going to get really, really dark. And the only diamonds that are going to shine are the real ones. The real ones. God's children. We know that this church is going to seem like it's going to fall off the cliff. But it's going to go through. It's going to go through. Don't, don't let yourself be pushed out. Stand close to God. And He will stand close to you. Our closing song is 137.
from or to seek to cover ourselves from. But this is something we want to walk into. Lord, we want to see you. We want to, be, we want to know that what we do and what we think and what we say is right and just and true. We want to lift you up. Help us to see as we go through, go into a brand new year, let us not make the mistakes of the past. Let us learn from these things that are behind us and let us move forward with you, listening intently for what you have for us. Let us be guided by you. Let us seek you. Let us long for you. Let us, let us feel the pounding of our own heart and let it say, Jesus, Jesus. And in your name we pray.